Hey everybody, so for my final project, I'm actually going to be focusing on a company that I'm currently working for, uh, Atlanta Digital Studio. They're a company in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm working with their data and uh, their social media content for my social media audit. And this is going to cover a period from about mid-August to mid-October of this year. And this is really geared toward uh, both my immediate supervisor as well as some of the people that I work with on a daily basis, uh, the other social media specialists and social media marketers. And it's also really to benefit the interns that we've added on, or the new people that we've added on uh, in just the past 60 days. So first we're going to cover a fan analysis. We're going to look at what our fan growth is doing on Facebook. We're going to move on and talk about Facebook engagement, uh, the post performance on Facebook, and then we're going to switch gears, talk about Twitter, and go over the same things. You know, how are we performing on Twitter? What is our engagement looking like? Um, and for both of these platforms, we're going to talk about what we could be doing better, uh, what we've done in the past, the new things that we're trying, and what direction we should take. Um, the key takeaways we're going to cover, some of the strategies we're going to employ going forward, and then in the conclusions, I want to kind of talk about the big picture um, and some other things that I've been able to see based upon the data that I've looked at, as well as some of the key takeaways that I've considered. So first off, um, our fan growth has actually been really steady and positive, but it's very slow especially toward the beginning of this period. Um, we weren't trying a lot of new things yet. Um, posting wasn't happening as frequently, but we were posting good content, not great content. So it's clear here just by this growth trend that you see that the content was reaching people. Uh, they were engaging with it just a little bit. Uh, they were liking it and we were steadily accruing new fans, but we could have been doing a better job. And if we look really closely, uh, at the day-to-day, -day, a lot of these new likes actually came in in October rather than Octo uh, August or September. And if you look specifically at October 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and right around the 16th, 17th, 18th, we started getting more likes than usual. And we can attribute that to these posts. This is what was going on at that time on Facebook. We were actually, uh, if you look at the top left post, we were actually posting about a newsletter that the company used to have, it kind of died and then they decided to revive it. And this has kind of been helping uh, our email fan base connect with our social media and the website. We actually now have a sign up for the newsletter on the website. So we were really kind of integrating, getting that involved. So what happened there was we were reaching outside of Facebook with our newsletter, with our website and bringing people to Facebook. So that's generating new likes. What we were also doing, uh, another way we were connecting our website and our blog to social media is we actually began posting uh, announcements about new blog posts, like the one you see here for National Coffee Day, that's on the bottom left. So that actually brought some people in, that got some of the people who were reading our blog to come on Facebook, some of the people who, on, who were on Facebook to go to the blog. And then down here on the bottom right, uh, this is a post we actually kind of experimented with. We had never used uh, Thunderclap before, in order to try and boost a post by uh, getting a lot of people to share it all at once. And we thought that might be a good idea to try and promote um, one of our sub-brands products and apparel. Uh, we were designing some new logos, uh, some new graphics at that time, and we decided to use Thunderclap to kind of reach outside of Facebook, outside of Twitter, um, and to get people to sort of pile on this one big post and help us share it. So these are the posts that were kind of helping us drive the new likes, bringing people in, uh, getting people's attention, letting them know about the Facebook page, about Twitter. Uh, but as far as our engagement and visibility goes, uh, it was kind of a different story. We had totally different posts uh, that were driving a lot of the engagement on the page itself. Um, but looking first at the overview, you can see there's an increase in the engagement and the reach that we saw in August and September, the more we started doing new things. Um, and typically what we see in the past is that our reach actually really outpaces our engagement. So we wanted to work on engagement. When we look closer at what we actually saw, uh, we're seeing around the end of August, there's a spike in likes. Um, we're getting some shares and then there's another little spike that happened at the end of September. The posts that were responsible for that activity are actually all right here. One of them was our National Dog Day post. Um, we actually posted some original content, uh, a video that was produced in-house. It was just for fun. It was non-promotional. Um, it was kind of atypical as far as what we post on the page. 
something else that was really atypical was the spotlights. We started doing what we called spotlight posts, um, where we looked at our clients. We started sharing info about our clients, about our team members, really giving more of an inside look about uh, you know what goes on at the Land of Digital Studio, who works there, uh, what type of people do we work with. So that was new, and that was also reaching people and getting people interested. Um, in addition, we actually started not only announcing our new blog posts that were coming from our website, we would actually post polls on Facebook that would pair a question with those uh, blog posts. For example, the National Coffee Day uh, post where we wrote about uh, local Atlanta coffee businesses. We actually followed that with a poll and asked people to tell us, you know, hey, which one of these is your favorite? Um, is your favorite on our list? If not, what is it? We were trying to get people to talk. So these posts were really what were driving that engagement. Um, so we were getting lots of likes. We never really had a problem getting lots of likes. Um, we get a fair number of shares, and we're not really getting lots of comments. Uh, but something that's begun to help that are these polls, these new posts where we're actually asking questions. We're using call to action, getting people to speak back to us. Uh, we need to really continue this moving forward. Moving on to Twitter, uh, Twitter's a different story. And really, our story with Twitter is going to boil down to needing to really go back to the basics and really approach Twitter and tweeting um, just from a better angle with better better posting habits. And it's, it's difficult to see any growth here because it's just it's all over the place. Um, our impressions and engagements just fluctuate wildly. And the reason that is is because we really don't tweet enough and we're probably not tweeting efficiently. Uh, or in other words, we're kind of treating Twitter like Facebook and we can't do that. It's a different platform. It has different demands. There's a different audience, and if you look here on the day-by-day, -day, which is much more specific than what we just saw, um, we tweet a lot on some days, we tweet a little bit on others. There are gaps where we don't tweet at all. Sometimes we go for a day or even more, maybe a week, without tweeting, and we really can't do that because our activity on Twitter is really going to drive our fan response. And as far as what we need to do to fix this, um, we're going to look at that in one of our key takeaways. So. I'll get around to the uh, solution to our Twitter problem in just a minute. But until then, key takeaway number one, we really just need to cross promote. We really need to focus on that. We saw a lot of success um, in our uh, little trials that we've been performing on Facebook um, and with our email newsletter and posting about new blog posts that are coming from our website. And according to Forbes, you know, cross promotion is a great way to increase fan growth rate on Facebook. So we really need to get on top of our integration, really get our website and our social media to talk more often. Um, another thing we can do is share coupons. Made in Atlanta, again, is our apparel brand, and we haven't actually offered or tried offering coupons on social media before, so if we do it, we really need to start on the Made in Atlanta page, and we need to share them on the Atlanta Digital Studio page. And coupons, of course, that's an incentive for somebody to follow your page, um, so they'll never really miss out on a deal when it comes along. It's very simple. And Social Media Explorer actually advises to use social media widgets on the main website. And what that does, just like you see here, is it keeps your website and your social media very close together, literally. Uh, this is actually my website uh, and my blog where I've actually shared a post that our brand produced. And so over here on the left, you see my blog feed. Over on the right in the margin, there's a widget for Twitter. And if we had scrolled down this page, you'd see a widget for Facebook. And that tells people who are reading my blog, hey, here's what I'm doing on Twitter right now. Here's what I'm doing on Facebook right now. So it really bridges those and kind of encourages people to go visit your social media uh, from your website. Takeaway number two, we just need to start some conversations, some real good conversation, and continue showing people uh, our brand's personality. According to Post Planner, asking questions and providing inside looks at the brand uh, can help to get people talking. Uh, we've been doing this. We've been trying poll posts and client spotlights. Those have been some of our most successful posts. Um, comments have been really low. Like I said, they've only accounted for about 1.5% of all engagements over the past uh, 60 days. But we can lift this if we continue to post more of that content that gets people to talk, like the polls, uh, just asking questions, maybe having a direct conversation with uh, our clients and kind of getting people to um, talk to us and talk to our clients. Going forward, we just need to remember, you know, we need to be human, need to be real. Uh, and just like that National Dog Day post, uh, I think it was successful because it was spontaneous. Um, it was just fun. It was non-promotional. 
and it just kept everything real. It kind of shows fans that you know there are real people running our brand. Okay, so back to Twitter. It's it's pretty simple. We just kind of need to be focused on the fundamentals here. So easy on the hashtags, harder on the tweet button. According to uh, Ad Espresso, tweets with hashtags are actually 33% more likely to be retweeted than those without, but tweets with only one hashtag are actually 69% more likely to be retweeted than those with two or more. And at the same time, we need to remember that 15% of users will actually unfollow a brand within three weeks if that brand hasn't made a strong enough effort to engage. So this is why we need to be tweeting, we need to be frequent, uh, we need to kind of ramp up the energy and uh, uh, the posting on Twitter. So we need to tweet more often. Uh, we need to continue to always include visual content. We're pretty good about that, but sometimes we don't post a picture or a video. And we need to use only the best and most relevant hashtags. It's also critical that we actually engage with Twitter followers in a way that's Twitter savvy. That's really what all this is trying to say. Um, and there's no real magic number. Uh, Frenetics recommends that you you just tweet really what's appropriate for your brand. Some brands are going to be tweeting um, 40 times maybe a day, but that's kind of excessive. But they always recommend um, tweeting no fewer than about three times per day and really no more than 14. The problem is that we tend to miss entire days. We'll go 24 hours or even a couple days without tweeting once. So we're not really often meeting that minimum, but sometimes we're kind of hitting the low end of the average. And here's some do and do nots that are taken from our actual uh, Twitter account. On the left, this is a great one. This is part of our uh, campaign that's going on this month. In this tweet, we've included a video, nice rich media. Um, we're only using one hashtag, the end alls hashtag, which is the one that kind of connects the discussion about Alzheimer's awareness. And we actually made the decision to pin this tweet to the top of our feed. And this is important because this is part of an ongoing campaign. We kind of want people to know um, what we'll be doing all this month. It's our big campaign, and so it's important that it doesn't get lost in all the other buzz. Over here on the right, it's a much simpler tweet. Um, there's not a lot to it. It's not terribly interesting. Uh, it doesn't have a picture. It doesn't have a video, so it's missing that rich content. It also doesn't use a hashtag. It's got a link, but because of all these other factors that are bringing it down, it's really not an effective tweet. So we need to stay away from the right side, do more of what's on the left. So the bigger picture, again, we really need to focus on IMC or just integrating, keeping our social media accounts and our website and our newsletter all working hand in hand. Uh, we need to be human. Uh, we just need to post fun stuff, non-promotional stuff every now and then. Uh, original content's great, and we have the capability to do that. Uh, we have a whole graphics team, and we're also uh, photographers. And we should also experiment more. I mean, Thunderclap was a great experiment and it worked out for us. Um, we got a lot of shares because of that and I think the plan going forward is actually to use Thunderclap and some similar platforms to actually push a lot of what we're doing for Alzheimer's Awareness Month. So, Just remember that we've already done some of this stuff. We've already seen success with it. Um, we've been integrating our website, social media, and our emails. We've been trying to be fun, original, and just human. Uh, just really trying to connect with um, fans from that angle and we've been trying new things uh, so we need to cross promote and integrate we need to be spontaneous and we just need to keep experimenting